I think today it takes a lot of courage, in many cases, to talk about the very subject of marijuana. But there were some interesting things that happened at the last meeting when I came in with my cap that said, Weed Police, and also, I love weed, California. And it all centered around the fact that I had, on a motorcycle trip from Washington State to Los Angeles, passed through the town of Weed. And Weed is famous because of Abner Weed. At one time, the world's largest sawmill was located in Weed. But as I look at the subject more, there is a lot of controversy today surrounding the very term weed. And in this case, we're talking about marijuana. There is a lot taking place on the scene in terms of marijuana. Many states have allowed for it to be used medicinally. And two, the only two that sent teams to the Super Bowl, Colorado and Washington, have legalized it for recreational use. So there's a lot of misinformation about marijuana, about the use of it, and what it is good for. In many cases, they, there is a notation that it is an evil weed, and yet there are people praising it for its medicinal purposes. What is the real truth? My intent tonight is not to change your way of thinking, but it is to give you some information upon which to do your thinking and maybe do additional research. A couple of the terms we'll talk about tonight include the word hemp and the term marijuana. They're basically the same plant. The difference is, and when we talk about organic plants, understand that all organic plants produce many different compounds. In the case of marijuana, they have identified over 100 different substances. Most of them are cannabinoids, which are manufactured by the plant. But those are broken down into two primary components. THC, which is tetrahydrocannabinol, cannabis cannabinol, and CBD. The first, the THC, is the one that we hear talking about because that has psychotropic properties. That works on the thalamus gland, which is located under the cerebellum in the brain, and it functions to control the limbic system, which is the system that controls our emotions, how we feel, how we think. And so all of the research has been centered around that particular component. But there is another component that does not have those properties. It does not make you high. Now, we've got a lot of botanists, amateur botanists, that are doing some fantastic work in terms of the product that the plant produces. Because when I started looking at the plant in terms of law enforcement back in the 70s, the percentage of THC was approximately 1%. Today, the average is about 13%. A lot of that comes because of the process known as vegetative propagation. It is an asexual method of reproducing the plant. Rather than allowing it to come from seeds with a male and a female, the female is a plant that provides most of the product. And so what they do is they take four inch cuttings and they replant those. And therefore, you have an identical plant to the one that you had before. When you go to a grow operation, it is an extremely sophisticated operation. The heat, the humidity, and even the timing of the lights going on and off is controlled because it produces at a certain season. So what they do is they replicate the length of day and night so that they can manipulate when the product is finished. It's a very sophisticated thing. Now marijuana has been around for thousands of years. It was cultivated during the Neolithic period, 10,000 years ago. 10,000 years BC, 12,000 years ago, we have records of it. Herodotus, the Greek historian, mentioned that the Sepians inhaled the vapors of this particular plant. We find that the Spaniards brought it 
to Chile in 1525. We found that when people came to Virginia in 1607, near the village of Powhatan, they saw marijuana being grown. The House of Burgess passed an act that required farmers to plant both hemp, the European hemp, and also the Indian hemp. And when I'm speaking of Indian, I'm talking about from Asia. These two differ in the properties that they produced because hemp produces a lot of different products. Hemp seeds are a complete protein, which means that they contain all nine essential amino acids necessary for us to live on. It is a food product. The oil out of that plant can be run directly into a diesel engine. So it is a superior biofuel. And as we look at the history of this plant, we know that George Washington was a hemp farmer. So was Thomas Jefferson. Washington and Jefferson both preferred marijuana to alcohol or tobacco, which they had, which they said had health concerns. There are also other of our presidents that have used it. James Madison said that it was what inspired him to create a more uh, democratic society. James Monroe also used it, as did Andrew Jackson, Zachary Taylor, Franklin Pierce. These are people that have done this over the years. So there is a lot of controversy that still surrounds this. Okay. Um, <laughs> I was confused with the light there. But, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> so there's a lot of controversy that, that surrounds the use of the marijuana. We're talking about in terms then of whether we're talking about the use of it as an intoxicant or the use of it for medicinal purposes. One of the things that we find in terms of medicinal purposes is that while the botanists and other people were working on it from the standpoint of creating plants high in the THC, because nobody wants to buy marijuana if they're not going to get high. But there is that component that's there. We'll talk about some of the products that can be made from hemp. There is a soy, uh, soy type product that can be made from it. There in Sweden, they actually make a hemp beer. It's useful for rope. In 1942, the government came out with a short film that they have denied until now it's made available, and it was called Hemp for Victory, in which they encouraged farmers to raise hemp. When we look at situations, I don't know if any of you are familiar with what's called Charlotte's Web, but Sanjay Gupta did a television show recently in which he featured Charlotte after whom this particular strain is named. In Colorado, where it is legal and there are people that do grow marijuana, they had a particular strain there that was high in the CBD and very low in the THC. People questioned their sanity. Why would anybody want to raise marijuana if you ain't going to get high on it? But what they have found is that, that there are many situations in which it can be useful. That particular situation in, involved Draget syndrome, in which children have spasms, seizures. And she was going through up to 100 seizures a day. They tried her on every medication that they could come up with and were unable to find anything that would reduce those tremors. They were trying her on drugs that were highly addictive. Charlotte is five years old. Her parents did not want to consider marijuana because of the fact that he is in the military and anything having to do with marijuana was something that they didn't want to have anything to do with. But they wanted to try it because those seizures could actually kill her. In Colorado, it is possible to get a prescription for medical marijuana but it requires two doctors. 
who wants to prescribe marijuana for a five-year-old girl? But the doctor that finally took the case was a well-educated, well-respected doctor, Harvard trained. While he was examining this young girl, she had two seizures. They got a second doctor and they tried the oil. And you will sometimes come upon uh, the term of Sanford oil. And this is the process by which it is by which it is, is obtained. This particular strain had very little, if any, THC in it. They gave it to a sublingual, which was a drop placed under the tongue. Her seizures went from up to 100 a day to possibly one, maybe two a week. There is a mother from Boiling Springs that has recently gone to Colorado seeking the same type of aid because of the fact that this is available. Marijuana as a plant is a biofuel and it also is a photoremedial product. It is being used in Chernobyl as we speak because it has the ability to pull some of the contaminants from the environment. It is also good for sewage treatment because it can take the phosphates out of the water in which are plugging it up because we're having algae growing from all of the phosphates that we're dumping down the drain as around chicken processing plants where the manure produces a lot, of, a lot of these types of substances. Marijuana is a Schedule I drug. And what does that mean? Basically means that there is no socially redeeming acceptable value for it. You cannot obtain it with a prescription and they have found absolutely no medical use. But again, when the studies were started, they were started on looking at only one property and that would be uh, what it could do to the brain and the function of people in terms of getting them high. When it came to putting it on the schedule, <clears throat> we had Robert O. Egbert, who recommended that it not be placed there. But since research was ongoing, he said, let's leave it there. It is provisional. And when the additional data comes in, it can be taken off because Section 501, or 201 of the bill allowed the Attorney General to reclassify it. But during this time, <clears throat> it was, they were, they were continuing the research when the National Commission on Marijuana and Drug Abuse met. They said, no, it should not be a Schedule I drug. It should be decriminalized. But this was the time that Richard Nixon was going through his tough on crime policy. And Nixon vetoed it, did not accept the recommendation of that particular committee. <coughs> Two years later, <clears throat> we have the commission again meeting. And the assistant secretary says, no. If we look at the definition, marijuana does not meet the criteria as a Schedule I drug. Marijuana is safer than many of the foods that we commonly eat. And as far as psychotherapeutic drugs, it is the safest non-invasive one that is known to man. But his boss, John Long, L-A-W-M, another one of John's here, said no. And so it persists as being a Schedule I drug. With all of the controversy that we have, it still is up in the air. While these states have allowed it for recreational use, it is still against the federal law. What is happening now is the federal government has said that they were not going to prosecute the situation or prosecute people in those situations. Most of the operations that allow it are extremely well controlled. But when you look at products that are currently being made, that are being used, we have automobile makers using products derived from hemp because they can be used in plastics. Companies like General Motors, Ford, Honda, Mercedes, it's been estimated that the Class C contains approximately 20 kilograms or a little over 40 pounds 
of marijuana produced products. It has the ability to replace things like linseed oil and some of the, and many other products because we're looking at two different products here. We're looking at two different products that come from those particular plants. So what I'm talking about is there is a lot of controversy here. We many times looked at the fact and said that no, it's going to make people criminals. But I think we may be looking at the problem from a slightly skewed point of view. Because when we look at criminals, we find that their abuse of other substances is also high. Alcohol plays a big role in the activities and things that happen with criminals. They have addictive personalities. They have surroundings and people and places and things in their life that cause them to be in this particular condition or do these types of things. So I'm not sure what that has to do with it. But what I wanted to do was provide you with some of the information that is available on the research. This is a remarkable plant. It could be used widely. It is grown in many places. We talked about the CBD oil, which is illegal in this country. But do you realize that in Europe, they press the oil and get the CBD rich oil, and it's legal to ship it to this country, but we can't produce it and do the same thing? Whether it cures the conditions that we're talking about, I don't know. Research needs to be done on it, in my opinion. I don't know what yours is, but what I have done is what I, what I have tried to do is give you information at which you can look at it. The determination of whether this is just an evil weed or whether it is indeed good medicine is up to you. You be the judge. 